Hey everyone, welcome to this video. In uh, this video, we're going to be talking about the virtual SSD, which is used uh, in the electron formalism of dose calculation. So I think it's most helpful to, you know, kind of portray what the virtual SSD is by talking about the electron inverse square correction. So this is the electron inverse square correction. You can see it makes use of this concept of the virtual SSD, which is your VSSD term there. And it also makes use of an air gap, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the VSSD is your virtual source to surface distance. And then your air gap is the gap between the isocenter and the skin surface. So you use the virtual SSD in your inverse square correction uh, rather than the actual SSD. And the reason that is, is because it comes from the differences in the treatment head uh, when you're in electron mode versus photon mode. And so I'll draw out electron mode here. Uh, at the top there, you, that's normally where your tungsten target would be. So that's where all of the photons are coming from um, in, when your uh, LINAC is in photon mode. Uh, but in electron mode, that source is actually retracted. And so you have a, a finite sized pencil beam that is coming from the waveguide rather than a uh, distribution of x-rays. And so you can see here that the ele electron pencil beam is coming down and rather than interacting with a flattening filter like in photon mode, the flattening filter is exchanged for something known as the scattering foil, which takes that electron pencil beam and spreads it out into a clinically useful beam, which you see here. And so the pencil beam starts to diverge from the scattering foil. And if we back project that beam divergence, uh, you can actually see that the electrons appear to emanate from a point source uh, that is located a little bit closer to the patient relative uh, to the x-ray source. And the distance from that virtual point to the surface of your patient is your virtual SSD. And this is always measured uh, with the surface of the phantom placed at the isocenter, which is a normal SSD of 100 centimeters. And so the virtual SSD is what we would actually measure and use uh, when we do our inverse square correction. And then the air gap would simply be the distance from the isocenter to your surface of the patient if you had an extended SSD. And uh, that's how you calculate your inverse square correction. And the virtual SSD is actually a function of the electron beam energy and also the size of the cone that you're using. So you have to measure it uh, for all of the different energies and all of your different cone sizes as well. And it is measured empirically, and so it's basically uh, determined by fitting uh, your SSD, basically your virtual SSD, to the measured dose falloff that you get uh, with an electron beam as a function of distance from the source. And it is by no means a perfect model of dose falloff. And in fact, at really extended SSDs, and the further we get away from that 100 centimeter condition, we actually might just go ahead and measure the electron output factor rather than using an inverse square correction because um, it's a little bit more accurate to just measure it at those extended SSDs. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that it's, you know, it's not always the most accurate correction, but it is pretty good over a limited range. So I'd like to elaborate a little bit more about the concept of the air gap. So I mentioned that the air gap was the distance between the isocenter and the surface of the patient. And if you recall images that I posted in previous videos of electron applicators, uh, they're pretty bulky and they really extend away from the treatment head quite a bit. And because of this, they get very close to the surface of the patient, which is what you see here. Uh, so this is a blue pad, in this case, is set up to 100 centimeter SSD. And you can see that the applicator is extremely close to the skin. And this is something that we want because it helps reduce our electron penumbra and reduce scattering. Uh, so we do this on purpose, but in some cases uh, we might be worried about collisions with the patient and uh, that would you know, not be good. And so in that case, we would move down the table and extend that SSD a little bit. Uh, and that would be an instance where we have an air gap. So this would be a situation where we would use an air gap in that inverse square correction. And that's it for the virtual SSD video, so thank you for watching.